Good afternoon. Um, welcome to my daily chat. Today is episode 974. We're getting closer and closer. And the topic today is actually a spin off from yesterday. I mentioned in yesterday's broadcast about this topic, but I didn't tell you what it was. So today I'm telling you. <laughs> um, the theme today is How Do You Love? And, it's in, and, it hap- and how is in capitals because I want to speak to that. Because the second line of that is What filter do you love through? And I'm not talking about love languages here, and I'll cover those in a moment too, but I want to give you some thoughts about maybe you're loving in a way that isn't landing, or maybe you're loving in a way that is attracting what you don't want. Yes, this is going to affect that. So stay tuned. So before I jump into that part, let me talk about the five love languages to, just to get you started and give me a framework in case you haven't heard about them. The five, five love languages were created by Gary Chapman. Um, he's a clinical psychologist. Clinical therapist, clinical, clinical psychologist, and he distilled over 30 years of being a therapist these five main love languages people express naturally, and if you don't match those, then you tend not to have as much love as you want in your relationship. So if you don't know these, take them to heart because they'll help you as well. But I've got something else bigger than that, I believe, after that. So the five love languages are uh, quality time, gifts, acts of service, physical touch, words of affirmation. Damn, knocked them out of the park all, all at once. And generally speaking, you can go to fivelovelanguages.com, the website, and do the free test and know what your your primary one is. Most of us generally have like a primary and secondary, a main two. And when you discover what you are and what your partners are, it is not, it's not about having the same ones, by the way. You don't have to worry about if your partner doesn't have the same ones you do. Don't worry about that. But know what your partner's is, what your partner's languages are or is, and you and you them as well. Because when you're in a relationship with somebody, you want to express how much you care about them. Using the love languages is a great tool because you understand that your, your partner likes to be told that you love them, whereas if you think you just have to show them you love them. And if you don't do that, you miss each other. So it's important to understand the five love languages first. And that's the first thing. But once again, I've got something more important to say in a moment. So just understand that part first. Because for a lot of us, we don't connect and we don't... Um, that's what I'm looking for. Relate in relationships unless we really know what we're in there for. And that's going to be my second piece. So let me back up the second piece for a moment. So one of the biggest challenges I I think we face in relationship is that we don't recognize that we're carrying, well, I don't want to say baggage. I mean, baggage is such an overused term. But we're carrying a lot of of items in our (laughs) our package, (laughs) who we are type thing. (laughs) Thanks for the love. I'm not not seeing any comments right now. I'm not sure why that's. Let me do this. Does, it, does that make a difference? No, it doesn't. All right. Does that say anything like that? No. Nope. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing things on my iPad because this lets me do my my Facebook lives horizontally, and sometimes it's got features I don't have on my phone, and vice versa. So I can't tell in the comments or not. So if you're saying something to me, thanks for letting me know. Um, hmm. Well, anyway, I, I'll continue anyway. So, in our, I'm, calling, I'm trying to think of another word, not package, but in our, in our persona, in our field. We carry a lot of perspectives about relationships from our past history. Now, I'm going to, I'm, I've talked a lot before about how we carry baggage from past relationships into the next one, but I want to speak to this particular piece that you may, may have missed before because it really hit me yesterday when I was talking in yesterday's broadcast. Why well, this is a piece that we don't always get, which is this. How we love, the filter we look through, is tinted, is colored, is shaded by what happened to us in the past, which means... Let me give you some examples. That if we went through relationships in the past that were very vanilla and flat, that may be the filter you're looking at your relationship coming up through that lens, which means if your relationship you're looking at isn't that, you may feel out of alignment. Similar to the five love languages I mentioned at the beginning, we tend to look for familiarity in relationship experiences that we've experienced before. Some of those are good. Some of those are not so good. So understand that you may be choosing your relationship partners and your relationship experience based upon what happened to you before. And if what happened to you before isn't what you want, it's time to make a change. I'll get to that in a second. So looking back at your history and the way you were in past relationships, maybe the last one you had, but quite possibly the last several. In fact, it may even go back to your childhood. Yes, even your childhood. Because you'll have learnt the way to express love and the way that you see love, that lens you look through, that filter, based upon how you experienced love from those around you. You were trained basically by that. And most times it was unconscious, subconscious. It wasn't even what you were thinking about. 
He didn't go, I'm going to choose love this way. None of us do that. But, under, but un, understanding that we are trained that way is huge when you start to get that. Because like the five love languages I mentioned, this is another way you can understand your modality by which you feel, attract, and enjoy love, and sometimes suffer with love as well. So if your love life isn't working out the way you want, this will be helpful to you. I mentioned that you are basically learning about love from those around you, especially from your parents. The reason why it's your parents is because your parents were the first people who expressed love to you. Ideally, they did express love to you. But being the first people who expressed love to you, quite likely it would happen when you were a very young age. And at a very young age, as most of us are, we're not usually that um, analytical. <laughs> Far from it. We're taking everything around us as being gospel. And that's the way it is. Life is this way. It's the way it's going to be. So we take on the perception and the understanding of love by the way it's presented to us. So if your parents expressed love to you in a way that was loud, boisterous, maybe even yelling, then your understanding of love is going to just look through that lens. Fast forward to your adult dating life, you won't even feel true love unless there's boisterousness, exuberance, maybe even yelling. Now, in some cultures, that's normal, I understand. But for most of us, we have this distortion about love because of the way we were raised. And I'm not blaming anybody, I'm just saying it's the way it is. We inherit patterns, we learn how things are from our parents, from those around us, in, um, I say this, in much more unconscious ways. We don't get taught in high school or junior high school or, or in preschool what love is and how it's expressed. I mean, the foreigner song, I, don't want to, I want to know what love is, should be a lament for everybody, basically, because we all carry this presumptive thing about love until we become aware of it. So this programming we take on, which is programming, which affects our lens, our filter through which we see love, is running automatically. Because again, we're very young when we learn this. Our parents love us a certain way and we go, that's the way love is. For me personally, I was raised in a family where love was never yelled. It was always nice, it was polite, it was suppressed because it was, you know, English reserved culture, you know, stiff upper lip and stuff. So there wasn't, a, there wasn't any exuberance and there certainly wasn't any arguments in the way I was raised with love, which meant any relationship I had where, where arguments showed up, I would leave. And I did, every single time. Because I didn't know that arguments could fit in a relationship because I wasn't raised with that. So we all have some form of imprinting, some form of filter, some form of lens that we look through at love because of the way we were raised. And it affects every single relationship. I would, I would bet dollars to donuts, to use an interesting colloquialism, that if you looked at your childhood and then looked at your dating life, there'll be some parallels, some corollaries. Cor 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 <laughs> I can't say the word right. There were some parallels, so think about that one, it's easier. Where who you are now and who you were then have some overlap, where your dating experiences with men, if you're a woman, or men, woman if you're a man, or whatever your, par your romantic disposition is, or sexual disposition is, that you'll notice with the people you're with, the partners you choose, that certain things will show up that will be very reminiscent of the way you were raised as a kid. They talked about you know, the, the framing in the, in the um, love coaching thing as you marry your parents in a way. Well, yes, you do, behaviorally speaking, because you're looking for that familiar loving that you felt when you were a kid. However bad, wrong, distorted, ab abusive it was, it's still the way you felt love. And for most of us who went through relationships, who went through families that weren't perfect, because most of our parents weren't perfect, even mine, there was a distortion of the way that love was expressed. And that distortion becomes our normal. So as an adult, even well, as a teenager as well, but as an adult, in relationships until we know differently, we'll keep repeating that same way of being. And the funny thing is, this is the most bizarre part of this whole thing, in a way, is that that way of being that we have will attract to us a partner who will express that form of loving. Meaning, for example, if you are somebody who was raised in a family, as I mentioned earlier, who was, was a lot of yelling going on, perhaps, as a kid, you remember a lot of yelling at your parents or yelling at you, whichever it was. As an adult, you'll be attracted to partners who would also yell. In fact, if they didn't, you wouldn't be attracted to them. This is like the five live, this is the five live languages distorted, I know. But this is understanding how we are wired. And until you undo that wiring, well, let me back up. If you love the way that works, great, go for it. But if you realize that is not working for you, 
The next step is to unpackage, untie that, so you can no longer be carrying around that, that way of being and that perspective so that your dating and relating life will be new and clean. And you can practice conscious out of, consciously out of love. I was going to borrow um, Gay and Katie, Katie Hendricks' book title, which is Conscious Loving. But it's a form of loving, loving consciously. Knowing and understanding that your dating choices, your relating choices, your partner choices aren't governed by what you learned when you were a kid. Sounds easy. It sounds easy, but it's not always, well, excuse me, it sounds simple, not always easy. Because for many of us, I mean, I went through a lot of um, psychological therapeutic context to reframe and understand this stuff. So now teach this because I've learned this. But if you haven't been working with a therapist or a guide or a coach or a counselor to rearrange that for yourself, this might be a good time to take some advice. So I'm, I'm biased recommending myself because this is my broadcast, so of course I'm recommending myself. But if you have this understanding, you want to change your wiring, change your beliefs, change that filter, that lens about your relating experience to something better, let's talk. It's something that if you don't change, it won't change on its own. Unlike the five love languages, which is at the beginning, these can be changed. Your five love languages, generally speaking, are built in. They don't, they don't tend to change from what I've read. Maybe they do, but I don't think they do. This part, though, the, the lens you use, the filter you look through, is absolutely changeable when you're willing to change. So willingness is first. Actually, awareness is first. Willingness is second. Action is third. If you want to take action, I'll put some links in the comments you can check out that will help you with this to realign your own belief systems, realign your own loving perspective on yourself, and also choose into a higher form of connection. My goal with my clients those who work with me is to really reframe their loving paradigm inside so that they're no longer carrying around an automatic pilot that's teaching them, excuse me, that's practicing things that aren't what they want. Understanding that what you're raised with does not have to govern your whole life. Understanding that the way your parents treated you as a kid or treated each other as a kid, the loving they expressed that way, doesn't have to run your life. Again, if it works, keep going. But if it doesn't work for you, this is a good time to change. So I'll put a link in the comments, a few links in the comments in fact, but one of them will be a link to have a chat with me. And if you're ready to talk about this and get some clarity as a gift from me to you, we'll have a free comp comp complimentary, free and complimentary, complimentary, same thing. So we have a chat right there. This weekend I recommend, because this is a Friday broadcast, I recommend you look at this in your own life. What's your perspective? What is your understanding of your own experience growing up? Your own love relationship experience? Can this be, I'll say this another way, Are you willing to change? Are you willing, do you want more love than you've had? Do you want different love than you've had? Do you want to have love that rocks your world the way you want it to? Then click the link below. It'll be in the comments. All right. Um, I, I was petering out. That's why I noticed my, my framing wasn't as, as eloquent as it was before. So, again, links will be in the comments when I sign off. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day on Facebook Live on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. It usually gets out every day of the week, seven days a week, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time, so you can join me. If you haven't seen my broadcast before and you want to see the replays, because this is episode number 974, I've done a few of these. Um, you can either do one or two things. Recommending you check out, check out my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. There's about two or 300 out there that are visible. The rest have been hidden because Facebook does that. If you want to check every single one of my broadcasts out, then I invite you to go over to my, my YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, that is where you can find all the replays of my broadcasts in order, of, excuse me, subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. If you peruse that playlist, you'll see broadcasts from newest to oldest, and you can absolutely find what you're looking for and get clarity and understanding. My work, my service, these talks are here to help you have more love, more success, more joy in your life. Follow my broadcast, check them out. If you want to get help, reach out. Again, links will be in the comments, which I do every time. You can check them out and sign up for some help. Get the clarity, guidance, and love you need. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.